You could be looking at a fee of up to $50,000 if you fail to obey the FTC's new crackdown on online businesses. If your business relies at all on reviews, social media followers, or even influencer partnerships, then you need to check out this video all the way through because there's some breaking news right now that can either make or break your business. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay now, trust me, as an e-commerce business owner or as a dropshipper, this can really affect your day-to-day -day business if you're not careful. So today I'm gonna let you know what you need to look out for so that way you don't land in any legal troubles and you can continue business as usual. So what's going on? Well, simply put, the FTC just put into effect a new rule that's gonna prohibit the use of fake reviews and fake social media influences. Let's go ahead and read over the summary, which pretty much explains everything that you're gonna to need to know. So the summary on this is the Federal Trade Commission or the FTC is issuing this final rule and statement of basis and purpose relating to certain specific unfair or deceptive acts and practices involving consumer reviews or testimonials, pretty much fake reviews. This final rule amongst other things prohibits selling or purchasing fake consumer reviews or testimonials, buying positive or negative consumer reviews, now let's stop here. Why would you buy negative reviews? So the reason people would do this is simply to slander their competition. So not only do people purchase fake positive reviews for themselves, but there's a few shady companies out there that will pay people to go and leave negative reviews on their competition, essentially slandering their name. Certain insiders creating consumer reviews or testimonials without clearly disclosing their relationships, which is simply just me going to somebody like, let's say my wife or somebody that could potentially be on the inside or somebody that I work with and telling them, hey, go ahead and purchase one of our products and leave a positive review. So essentially like insider information. So pretty much people from within the company or people that are close to people within the company. Creating a company controlled review website that falsely purports, I think that's how you pronounce it, purports, to provide independent reviews. So essentially instead of hiring an outside company to do reviews for you, you're hiring your own company that's gonna be biased towards you. Certain review suppression tactics, which would really include deleting the negative reviews and selling or purchasing fake indicators of social media influences, which is pretty much social media engagement and followers. So influencers or companies that are purchasing engagement, such as followers, views, likes, and shares. Now, even if your company isn't purchasing fake reviews or fake followers or engagement, make sure you keep watching because some of the companies or some of the influencers that you work with they might. So I'm going to teach you a few things that you need to watch out for. So that way you can make sure to avoid these types of companies or influencers. Now, why is it so important that the FTC had to step in and make a rule about it? And what exactly is this rule going to start prohibiting? So pretty much what's going on is that there's a lot of consumers out there that are being deceived by these dishonest business practices. So these companies are lying to these customers faces to get them to purchase their products. And the way that they're doing this is through fake influence or through fake reviews. So essentially it's getting people to waste money on some garbage product or service. So this is really the biggest reason why the FTC is stepping in. So that way it keeps its consumers safe and gets rid of these dishonest business practices. It's pretty much just trying to level out the playing field and make all of the markets fair. So what exactly is being ruled out and what do we need to watch out for? So one, fake reviews. So anybody that's purchasing fake reviews, anybody that's actually paying money in exchange for a positive review in particular, or paying money for a negative review in particular, can't be doing that. That's against the rules. You can get fined. I find you guilty. Also making your business look a lot bigger than what it actually is, whether that be with fake reviews or with fake engagement on social media, fake followers, fake views, fake likes, fake shares. Now, again, this isn't only applying to businesses, but this is also applying to influencers. So if the influencers that we're working with are purchasing fake reviews or fake engagements, then we're not the ones that are gonna be in trouble. They are, but we're gonna be wasting time and money by sending them our product or paying them to help promote our product or whatever it may be. Because at the end of the day, if they get shut down, if they get fined, then we're stuck. We paid them, we gave them free products and we don't have any content. Now, not only that, but to be fair, you don't want to be working with influencers that have fake followers because their engagements are going to be trash anyway. They're not going to have converting numbers. Besides that, we can't be writing reviews ourselves on our own products, and we can't be telling our family members to write reviews for us or our friends. Also, no AI generated reviews. 
So there's a lot of companies out there that are now generating reviews on the spot for things like different Amazon listings or Shopify reviews. This is also one of those things that is no longer going to be acceptable. Now, when I talk about purchasing fake reviews, I'm not necessarily only limiting it to a monetary purchase. This can also include exchange of goods or services. So in exchange for a positive review, I'm going to give you a free product. We can't do that anymore. I find you guilty. What we can do is exchange a product or we can pay somebody for an honest review. That's what we need to do. We need to make sure that we're paying people for their honest review, whether it be good or bad. We cannot influence them to make a choice. It needs to be directly from them. Another service that a few businesses were engaging in was review trades. So I review you if you review me again, that it's no longer a thing. Can't be doing that. Now, I know as a business owner, a lot of people are going to look at the reviews and they're going to see that some of them are positive and they can probably think, look, I know this one's fake, but I'm just going to leave it there. So some people play dumb. Don't play dumb anymore. Now people have the option to report these reviews. So if you know that it's fake, chances are there's a few other people that are going to read it and they're going to also know that it's fake. A lot of the times there's a dead giveaway. So don't play dumb. People can report your business. Make sure you get rid of all of these fake reviews yourself. Also, don't be deleting negative reviews while you're deleting the fake positive reviews. The reason for this is because like I mentioned earlier, review suppression, you're not allowed to do that anymore either. You can't be intentionally deleting negative reviews to be able to pump up your overall star rating. Now, besides that, another thing that you're not going to be allowed to do anymore is going to be to threaten people on changing their review. This is also a part of review suppression. And I personally don't know anybody that's done this. But there are companies out there that are going to reach out to reviewers or buyers and they're going to bully them to changing the review. That's a big no, no. Now, if you didn't already know, while this does affect us as dropshippers and the influencers that we work with, this could potentially also affect our suppliers, because if we have suppliers that are practicing these bad business practices, then they could also start to get fined and potentially shut down, which leaves us in the dust. If we don't have a supplier, then when we get an order, we're going to scramble around looking for a new supplier for a product. So here's a few things that you need to watch out for when you're reading reviews or when you're looking at somebody's social media profile. So in order to spot fake reviews, one of the easiest ways to do this is simply going to be to look at generic and just very broad reviews. There's a lot of companies out there that when they purchase their reviews, they don't even read them. So if you start looking through what they're saying, they're going to have a lot of five star reviews and a lot of them aren't even going to be specific to the product that they're selling or to the company even. So if you see a lot of reviews that say my mother loved this product, this is a great company. I would definitely recommend them. These, while not all the time, they're going to be fake. A lot of the times, there's something that you need to be weary of and watch out for, because if all of their comments are very generic like this, then chances are a lot of them are fake. But if they're mixed in with some negative reviews, some neutral reviews and some positive reviews or mixed in with very detailed reviews, reviews that have images, then it's a lot easier to trust them. Look, bad reviews, they're not necessarily always bad. Whenever somebody has a bad experience, they're going to be more inclined to leave a bad review than a good review. So more people are inclined to leave a bad review when they have a bad experience than leave a good review when they have a good experience. It's just how the market works. But if you have a healthy mix of a few bad reviews, a few neutral and a few good, then that's a good sign. If you find somebody that has just straight down the board five star reviews, that's also something that you need to watch out for. If you see that they have absolutely no three star, two star or even one star reviews, then read through the reviews, read through the different comments and see what people are saying. Again, stay weary of very generic reviews. When it comes to social media, purchased engagement pretty much sounds the same way. There's a lot of profiles out there that I've seen that have maybe 60 or 70,000 followers, but they have very generic comments. Like let's say it's a travel blog that purchased fake followers. Some of the comments on these posts might not even make sense. Some of them might say just amazing with a few emojis or this is beautiful with a few emojis. That's something that you need to watch out for. A lot of accounts that leave these types of comments, a lot of the times they're bots. Even if they're not purchased all the times, you're going to see these all the time. Again, what you want to look out for is going to be reviews that are specific to the post or to the content. So if it's a post about a beach, there should be a few comments on there that say this is a beautiful beach. Where is this? I want to go there so bad. The water looks beautiful. Things like that rather than just wow, heart emoji, amazing heart emoji. When you start reading through the comments, you can really see the difference. Another thing that you can do to look out for fake purchase engagement is the followers to view or engagement ratio. So 
it's pretty obvious. If you have more followers, you're going to have more likes. You're going to have more views. You're going to have more comments. There's a few social media profiles out there that I've seen that have a lot of followers, maybe 60 or 70,000, but their pictures are only getting maybe 10, 20, maybe even 100 likes. That's way too low for somebody that has over 50,000 followers. Now, I get it. Social media changes, algorithms change, people's views tank sometimes, people's engagement tank sometimes. But there's usually an average, if you look through the different posts, sometimes some will be doing a lot better than others. It's not always just going to be the same ratio throughout. Also, when you start to read the comments, you'll be able to start putting two and two together and it'll start to become pretty obvious what's fake and what's not. Now, in every niche, the engagement ratio, it's different. So what you can do is look up a few different accounts in each niche and make sure that they have more or less similar followers and then start to look at the engagement rates. If they're similar, then it should be okay. If there's a drastic difference, then watch out. So what can you do to stay out of legal trouble? Well, simply put, be honest about your business, be honest about your business practices and don't purchase fake reviews. So you can still chase after people for reviews, but you need to do it in a smart way and in an honest way. So there's apps on Shopify like judge.me product reviews that will send an email to your customers asking them for a review after they've made their purchase or a few days after they've received their item. Now, this is a good way to start chasing people down to get reviews that also a few other companies put into effect as well. So Etsy and eBay, both of these companies do the same thing. Whenever somebody makes a purchase, they send over an email later on, a follow-up email asking for a review. Also, whenever you're following up for reviews or when you're messaging somebody, let's say on Instagram, asking them for a review, don't ever imply that you want them to leave a good review. Always ask them to leave an honest review. Besides that, don't offer incentives anymore, whether it be a discount for an honest review or anything like that, don't do it. Now, speaking of judge.me product reviews, this app also allows you to import real reviews from your suppliers to your store. I wouldn't do this anymore either. The reason for this is because if you start to import these reviews, Again, it starts to make your store look bigger than what it really is. It's artificially inflating it. While those are real reviews, they're not your reviews. Yes, they're going to be real to the product, but they're not real to your store. Instead, they're real to your suppliers. So review importing, no more. Don't be doing that anymore because that can also lead you into legal troubles because again, you're going to be artificially inflating your numbers and the perception of how big your store really is. I find you guilty. Also, when we're working with our influencers, we need to be vigilant. We need to check out their different metrics. We can check out how many followers they have, look through their followers and make sure that they're actual followers. Click on a few random profiles, make sure they're real people. Look at their engagement rates, like their comments, their views, the shares that they have on each video. And very importantly, see if they're replying to any of their comments. If the influencer or the company is replying to their comments, then that's typically a good sign. And also you need to be upfront with your influencer as well. Mention to them that, yeah, you're gonna send them the free product or you're gonna pay them to review your product, but it needs to be honest. It can't be implied that it's gonna be a good review. It needs to be an honest review. And same goes when they promote it to their viewers. When they're making these videos to show off their products, they need to be honest and thorough. Now, one cool thing that you can ask influencers for, or something that's gonna be very helpful for you, is gonna be a media kit. A lot of the times, a real influencer or an influencer that actually takes their job seriously is gonna have a media kit. This media kit is simply gonna be a link to their engagement. So they're gonna send you a link and when you click on it, it's gonna give you all of the stats for their YouTube channels, like how many subscribers they have, what their engagement rate is, same for their TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, or whatever social media profiles they have. So what did you think of today's video? Let me know down in the comments below. If you wanna read up a bit more on this ruling, I'm gonna have a link to the PDF down in the description below, along with a link to the FTC website where you can also get a little bit more information on it. So again, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Have you implemented any of these business practices, whether the good ones or the bad ones? Have you ever purchased any fake followers or fake reviews? Or have you ever imported any reviews? Let me know down in the comments below. Huge thank you once again to everyone for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. My name is Mario with AutoDS. Wish you all the best of luck in your dropshipping businesses, and I'll catch y'all next time.